All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome to a Sunday breakdown session brought to you by Monster Money Trading. There's a lot going on at at the moment. I've decided to do a video instead of just the normal Discord breakdown, um, just because there's so much going on at the moment. But I would like to still keep this particular breakdown session as simple as possible. So we're going to be focusing mainly on the charts just looking at price action as out of whack as things are just going to be focusing on what price is telling us right now and we'll touch on a little bit of fundamentals but i would actually like to do a second video addressing some of the things that are going on at the moment all right so all in all let's get started here with gj gj last week we had quite a strong bearish candle closure right but for the most part we are still respecting this previous weekly resistance at 166. So even though we closed bearish, bearish, we've closed right here on this previous resistance level. Just trying to figure out the zoom annotate. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so here we go. I've done a, a little bit of a breakdown already, mocked up some levels. We've got this very key area right here at 166. Like I say, that's your previous weekly resistance. And then if we're looking at the lower time frames, we can see that we've got a critical level here at 165. 165, 200 to be a little bit more uh, specific. So you can see here, um, we've tapped into this level now three times last week. I was having a look at this level and that 166 was acting as a resistance for this little range. And one of the uh, breakdowns actually given was that if we can break out of this range, break above 166, I'd be looking for buys. Overall, even though we are bearish on last week's candle, overall we are still bullish here on GJ. So Friday's candle closed bullish. All right. We can also see... Uh, I've drawn in this trend line, but keep in mind, this is only the second tap of this trend line. So we'll see in the coming week if this trend line is valid. If we do break to the downside, right? if we're breaking below 165, 200, of course there is potential for sales below that level. All right. To the left here, we've got quite a nice clean range moving down to 163, let's say 163, 150. It's about a 200 pip range, all right. Could definitely get filled, but there are obviously levels to, to be aware of here for sales, but definitely a lot of range moving down, at least into 164, 300, let's say for about 80 pips. But for the most part, I would like to see these bars play out. So early on in the week, we can expect to see a bottom wick being formed potentially tapping into this 166 level or even deeper into 165 and then we'll see if we get that bullish pressure back in the mix and looking for price to actually move back up to these highs at 172. It's obviously a higher time frame target and you have to be aware that there are areas to the left here which we need to be careful of. So price consolidated for area of t uh, for a period of time and found support at 167, 650, let's call it, right over here, uh, where if we do tap into that level, you know, we could see price react from that level. There's also an area around 169 or 168, 700. Looking to the left, these are your previous highs as well. So, you know, as we move up, there are obviously levels to be aware of. Uh, but for the most part, 
I am looking for us to move back up to 172. So I would like to see these buys play out. Like I say, quite important. I would like to see a bottom wick being formed on the weekly. Uh, potentially just retesting this 166 level one last time before then moving up. So overall still bullish on GJ, but we are in a slightly troublesome area at the moment looking to the left you know you do have these these areas here where we've had some strong reactions to and based off the daily you know this area that i've just marked up right there was our resistance for a long period of time now based off the daily we are still trading below some of this resistance area so i would like to see price break above let's say 169 to be safe um for some for some really solid buys back up to 172 so we had this previous lower time frame structure this was our previous uh, lower higher low higher low our previous higher low and if we're looking at the structure of of the market all right what will happen is if we are downtrending here which we don't know just yet as price is in a range um, but as we retest this previous higher low you'll see how price reacts here and you could potentially see us even reject and move back down to some of these levels but like i say i'm, I'm overall bullish here on gj and i would actually like us to break above that 169 level to then move up to 160 sorry 172 So in a nutshell, that's GJ. Just having a quick look here at the Japanese Japanese yen currency index. All right, for the most part, you can see we are still very much bearish. All right, Bank of Japan keeping their rates in the negative still, still it got a dovish stance, and we can see that yen weakness. There has been some volatility on the yen with the currency interventions. All right. So that's always something to just be aware of and be careful of. But there's not too much we can do uh, other than adapt. But for the most part, higher time frame, bearish on the yen. So GJ, I would be looking for those continued buys back up to 172. Gold. Very, very interesting situation on gold. Very unique times. So... We had uh, these these lows formed at 1616 or 1618, where we tapped back into last week after FOMC. We had a really nice move down as expected, and then we failed to break these lows. So we clearly just didn't have enough liquidity to break through this area. And since at the moment markets are quite illiquid. Uh, even the Fed themselves, let me just see if I can find this. Even the Fed themselves, Fed says market liquidity remained low in several key asset markets since May, which could amplify and may ultimately impair market function. So algos are just struggling to adapt, or they are adapting, and we're seeing a lot of volatility and higher time frame ranging here at the moment by the way this is the discord group seth sent some very nice information here um, on gold and the dollar so go and have a look at that thanks for that seth all right but now looking at structure on gold so just looking at our price action all right, as strong as Friday's candle was to the upside, we are still respecting overall bearish market structure. I would not consider that gold is bullish until we break above 1730. So until we break above these highs, I would not be bullish on gold. But right now at the moment, price is sitting Right at this key area, 16.82. We traded above this level for a good few months, and you can see that 
we had a very, very significant area in price here. Lots of taps and strong reactions to this level previously. All right, and we finally broke through this level in September. So we're still trading below those lows. And if you're looking at this trend line based off the daily chart here, we're sitting right at that trend line. So it's going to be very interesting to see what price does as we open up um, this coming week. But if we do break above 1682, could potentially see some further pullback into the 1720s, 1730 level. All right. And then we would just be in overall higher time frame range. There's a lot of uncertainty, doubt and fear in the market right now. Lots going on. Obviously, economies are not in the best of places. A lot of tensions, war, um, you know, all of that. Just a lot going on at the moment. That's so why I didn't want to get too deep into the fundamentals right now. Just breaking down what's going on here on the chart. For the most part, you know, like I said, we'll have to see how price is reacting to this 1682 level. If we do get a nice reaction of this level early in the week we could be potentially looking for a move back down to the lows but that's going to depend on cpr on thursday cpr is going to hold a lot of weight and give us some insight into what may happen at the next fomc event in december we've also got american elections this week if i'm not mistaken these are midterm elections um, but still, if we go and have a look at the dollar index, all right, just something I noticed, and we look back at some of the, the past elections, all right, ignoring 2020 as we had COVID, a lot of, um, like I say, unique times, very unique times. But anyway, if we're going back a little bit further, looking at the 2018 elections, all right, that brought us some. Uh, do dollar strength right here. Six of November twenty eighteen. So yeah, we found support on the seventh of November, and then we moved up for the rest of that week. If we go back to the twenty sixteen elections, we can see we had a really really nice rally. Um, the next day, funnily enough, let's have a look here. So November 2016, 8th of November, not too much happened that day, but the next day we had that nice liquidity grab and then moved up, uh, had a nice rally here on the dollar. So it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, what happens this next week. With this candle on Friday, you know, we had this massive drop on the dollar, very, um, very impulsive move down here. Uh, if we do break last week's lows, we could come back and retest this area at 109, 500, 109, 600. Uh, overall, I'd still be looking for for dollar bulls, um, but we can see here on gold at the moment there is a lot of indecision in the markets. All right, and at this point in time, we could even potentially see gold shift to the safe haven as we know it uh, in these times of economic uncertainty and with all the um, tensions going on around the world at the moment but like i say for dollar for gold bulls we would have to see price break above 1730 at the moment gold's uh, sorry sorry dollar is still in this range gold is also still in a range so higher time frame direction hangs in the balance we have to just wait and see what's going to happen here um, and for the week ahead i just advise you guys to take it easy be careful preserve capital and obviously just make sure you're always taking higher probability trades remember you don't need to be trading every day so if things are not clear no trade is always going to be a good day. So to just summarize on gold here, very tricky situation. This candle on Friday 
uh, is throwing me off quite a bit. Uh, we are still respecting high time frame bearish structure. We're sitting at a very key area in price. We'll have to see how we react here. If we do break above, expect to see further pullback or higher time frame ranging. Not bullish until we break above this previous bearish structure at 1730. And then I would like to see dollar bulls come back into the picture. We could see that potentially with CPI later next week. Um, but we have also had some dovish remarks from uh, certain Fed speakers in the past week. Although at the FOMC press conference, Fed Powell did uh, do away with those pivot prayers. So we would expect to see further dollar strength. But as we can see, a lot of uncertainty in the markets and just this uh, lack of liquidity is uh, throwing some problems into the mixer. So we just have to stay adaptive, stay patient, and uh, it's going to be an interesting week. So I hope this was somewhat insightful. I'm still trying to wrap my head around everything that's going on, um, but I know this coming week should answer some of our questions. So take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the morning, and safe trading.